liberalism was the dominant creed of American politics from the time Franklin Roosevelt was elected president in 1932 through the mid to late 1960s. And during that period, everyone called themselves a liberal. Richard Nixon called himself a, called himself liberal. Dwight Eisenhower called himself a liberal. Uh, Joe McCarthy had nice things to say about liberals, believe it or not, in those days. Um, and, uh, and so liberal was something everybody wanted to be. Uh, and then, you know, you'd fight about the details. Uh, liberalism, however, tried to do some things in the 60s and early 70s that it, that it couldn't do. Um, it became too ambitious, uh, and, uh, and it opened itself up to all kinds of charges. Now, part of the problem was that while it was trying to do these things, the United States was conducting a war in Vietnam, a very illiberal war in Vietnam, but one that had been started by liberals. And this was very damaging uh, to everything that touched it. But other things like everyone, it was a good idea for sure to give blacks equal rights and to try and uh, uh, raise their, ra uh, make, give a, fair, a more fair playing field for blacks and women and other minorities. But liberals never considered who was going to pay the cost for these things. And they, they felt like, I would say most liberals, you, you can't generalize about all of them, but most liberals felt like their good intentions were enough. And they didn't really worry too much about the results. And the results in politics and government are never what you think they're going to be. And so the people who were asked to pay the cost for the liberals' ideas of, of affirmative action and uh, anti-discrimination laws and extending rights to everybody, were the very people who had supported the liberal program, the working class, the white, mostly the white working class. And these people found their jobs taken away from them, their neighborhoods destroyed, they were being sent off to fight a war that the liberal uh, who, who, who had planned the war and were conducting the war didn't send their children to fight because they had college deferments. And they, they became uh, very sympathetic to the arguments that were then made to them by conservatives. And here's where we get to the conservative side of it. Around the same time, conservatives felt like the media uh, wouldn't give them a fair shake. Following the election of uh, the, the election of Lyndon Johnson against Barry Goldwater, where they felt like Goldwater was ridiculed and not taken seriously. So uh, they got very smart. They got together with um, large corporations and right-wing billionaires, and they invested a gazillion dollars, literally. Well, obviously, it's not literally because it's not a literal figure, but more money than anyone has really ever been able to trace into opinion formation, into creating an alternative universe of think tanks, magazines, radio stations, television networks, uh, pressure groups uh, designed to change the world view of most Americans. And they largely succeeded. Conservatives treat the media like a referee in a basketball game. And they're always screaming and hassling that they're being unfairly treated. Now, if you put yourself in the uh, place of the referee, you've got three choices when someone won't stop screaming at you. One is, you can listen to what they say and see if they have a point, and if they do, act on it. Two is, you can try to throw them a few calls and shut them up, just so maybe they'll go away. Or three, you can eject them from the stadium. Uh, the media can't eject anybody from the stadium. So the only thing they can do to try and placate these conservatives who've invested tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in screaming at them is to either throw them a few calls or actually listen to their arguments and decide that maybe they have a point. So what I try to do in this book uh, is restore some balance to this debate and to restore some honor to the term liberal, which is, it was historically a very honorable term in this country and happens to describe the politics of the majority, although you'd never know it, and they don't know it, because all they've been getting is the demonization of the word. Liberalism, uh, the great literary critic Lionel Trilling once said, is more of a temperament than a philosophy. Uh, liberalism comes out of the Enlightenment, and what it really means is a willingness to follow evidence wherever it leads, that each uh, man or woman is free to decide what they believe in and to follow it, and that none of us have the right to interfere with that. So liberalism arose in reaction to uh, divine rights, uh, as saying, no, we're not going to take orders from someone who professes to speak for God. And it, and it has fought all totalitarian ideologies like Marxism and fascism and Islamicism. And today, the radical right-wing 
of the Republican Party who profess to know, uh, simply know what's better for everyone. These things have to be discussed and debated and, and thought out. And um, so liberalism is really just a sort of clearing of the way, of, of the path for everyone to follow their own um, heart and, and mind. But the fact is, is that to simply say that is not enough. You have to actually um, provide for that. Uh, as, a, as a philosophical notion, it's very attractive, I think, to most people. But then the question is, is how do you achieve it? What's important is that liberals are willing to use the power of the government to provide teeth to the idea of freedom, whereas conservatives talk about freedom, but they basically leave you on your own, no matter who's trying to crush it. So I say, as a matter of pra pure pragmatism, we need to rejuvenate the word liberal. We need to re-strengthen it. We need to make it something that nobody needs to run away with, run away from. I'm fine with defining what kind of liberal you are. There are some liberals I wouldn't want to be associated with either, uh, but. Uh, or some people who are considered liberals. I don't necessarily consider them. But, uh, but it's just a, it's a mugs game to try and pretend that you can run away from it. Uh, if, if you run away from the word liberal, you're going to get the word wimp stamped on your forehead, and that's a lot worse.